Hello everyone and welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host say Joe Two in Love. Amazing. Amazing. Full gear. What a pay-per-view. Uh, I have to look back again, but that may have been arguably the best Pro wrestling pay per view I've ever seen. Top to bottom, that was just great. Hard to put in the words, but I'll try my best in this review. But I made you to love. Um, if you're here and if you're new, click that subscribe. If you want to see more of these videos, as far as pro wrestling reviews, they're on the channel to find. But thank you. And yeah. First off, before I get into the review, I want to talk about big news that came on Full Gear last night. Jay Lethal. Jay Lethal is now all elite. For those who don't know, Jay Lethal for many years was in TNA, Impact, Ring of Honor. Some of the best matches you'll ever see. His match with AJ Styles in 2015, that was... Very good, very good. Yeah. With the news of Ring of Honor taking hiatus to start 2022, Jay Lethal was among the roster that is going to be cut. So... Now, instead of waiting, he is now signed with AEW. And a great signing. He will face Sammy Guevara on Wednesday for the TNT Championship. So, great match to look forward to on Wednesday. Also, it was announced on the buy-in that... It will be, or actually, it was made during the show, but Orange Cassidy will have a partner from Chaos to face Butcher and Blade this Wednesday on Dynamite. Tomorrow, Ishii, tomorrow, tomorrow, Ishii from New Japan Pro Wrestling. Very good. Great addition, great, just going to be a great feature to look at on Dunmite on Wednesday. Those who teaming against the Butcher and the Blade, good stuff, ultimately leading towards, I assume, Kazucha, Kazuchka, Okada, sorry, my words are just, eh, but Okada, Will eventually be in AEW sometime soon. We'll just have to see. But good to see Ishii going to be in AEW and going to be on Wednesday. Along with Jay Lethal. So to start the review. Starting with the buy-in of Full Gear. So on the buy-in, we had Nala Rose and Jamie Hayter for Sakao Shida and Thunder Rosa. So this is basically opponents in the quarterfinals of the TBS title tournament. Rose for Shida, Hayter for Rosa. Good match to build up between these four. 
I have their matches in the tournament. But they're already matched between all of them. Um, it was a superplex by Jamie Hayter. Followed with a frog splash by Rosa. Or Rose, now Rose. For near fall, which was broken up by a missile dropkick by Thunder Rosa. And Shia ultimately won the match with a jackknife cover on Nicole Shia, or Nala Rose. Back to Frog Splash. We did see, because yesterday was the 16-year anniversary of A. Guerrero's passing. Mr. Latino Heat. And we saw a bunch of homage towards A. Guerrero. That was just the first of the frog splashes of many we saw during the night. But there was that good match to have on Bayern. Decent. So then we get to the main show. And man, what a match to feel like I'm going to be saying that a bunch during this review. But what a match to open the main card of Full Gear. MJF, everyone's favorite. Everyone, the most humble guy in AEW and pro wrestling. Or the most hated, whichever you want to say it. For Starby Allen, this was great. I mean, between the two, two of the four pillars MJF mentioned to lead AEW into the future, it did not disappoint. So they were on the outside. MJF was arguing with some heckler in the crowd. Darby hit his dangerous suicida to MJF on the outside to where he he just fires out like a cannonball. Just crazy by Darby Allen. Then he set up MJF on the apron. Went for a coffin drop. But. Which had to have sucked. He landed flush. On the ring apron. Which MJF was able to move out of the way. Yikes. So MJF was working on the. Back of Darby. He landed a brute. Brutal torture rack and backbreaker for a near fall. Then walked on another backbreaker fall with a gut wrench for a two count. They're fighting on the mill rope. Darby hit a stunner off the top mill rope for some separation. MJF caught Darby with a powerbomb backbreaker. Looked like it sucked for MJF's knee. MJF's knee was taking a brunt of the contact throughout this match. And interest, probably a spot of the match, or at least one of them. Darby went for a code red, but MJF countered into like a razor's edge like power bomb for a near fall. Darby, because MJF's knee was bothering him by this point. Darby was targeting the knee of MJF, hit a couple of chop blocks, went for a figure four. But MJF countered. They were on the apron. 
MJF landed a tombstone pile driver, leaping tombstone pile driver on the apron. They were having dueling cradles for a near fall. They were actually rolling with inside cradles in the middle of the ring, around the ring. I'm surprised neither one of these guys got dizzy. The referee was trying to keep up with it, but to no avail. So, Darby hit a so-so coffin drop on MJF on the outside. Then, Darby was back in the ring, hit a coffin drop, or was about to, but MJF got his knees up. MJF rolled to the outside. He got Darby's skateboard. Threw it to Darby. Darby was contemplating hitting him, but gave it to the ref. While the referee was distracted, MJF hit Darby in the face with Dynamite Diamond Ring. And he said that he could roll him up, beat him with a headlock takeover. He hit. He actually hit a headlock takeover. Fall with the pin for the win on Darby. Fantastic open for full gear. Just and the thing about MJF, he doesn't wrestle a lot, but when he does, it matters and. This just so showed that both of them are really good at what they do. And they're both pillars of AW for a reason. Oh man. And that reaction for MJF. I mean, credit to Hangman Page, but when the time comes, MJF will be hangman for AEW World Championship. <laughs> then we got FTR first the Lucha Brothers for the AEW World Tag Team Titles. Two of the best tag teams in the very world. Very best in the world. A rematch from Dynamite, and this did not disappoint either. So, to start the match, Penta, he was thrown into the barricade, and Phoenix's brother went for a dive on the outside, but he was caught by FTR, thrown into Penta, into the barricade. Got the advantage for FTR. The majority of this match for the time being was Penta getting beat up on. Hot tag then the Phoenix. Sorbonne hit double cutters on FTR. His tightrope kick, which I still don't know how he does. But... He was exchanging with Dex, but Cash caught him in the face with one of the AAA Mega Tag Team titles. Dex hit a brain buster for a near fall. FTR then hit a assisted, I'm not sure what they were going for, but an assisted backdrop. For cash for near fall. And then hint the anniversary of Agro's passing. Penta hit the three amigos. Phoenix hit the frog slash for near fall. Nice near fall. 
FTR hit their spike pile driver for a two count. FTR was trying to confuse Lucha Brothers wearing their green masks from previous match. No avail. Lucha Brothers hit their spike pile driver finisher for the win. Another very good match. Only the second match in, and two match a year contenders right off the bat. FTR and Lucha Brothers deliver. Then we got the big fight feel between Miro and Brian Danielson. Finals of the world title of in their tournament. Obviously, this is going to be Miro, or not Miro, Brian Nelson and John Moxley. But still was a very good match in their own right. Brian, you can tell with this schedule, is not 100%. Coming in this match, and well so. But still very good. The outcome... Had me a bit confused. So. Brian. Of course. The dynamic in this match. Was the power of Miro. Versus the. Diversibility. The submission. Quick game. Of Brian Danielson. Brian he was dumped. With an overhead suplex on the outside. Brian then was sent into the barricade and the steps by Miro. They were back in the ring. Miro caught Brian with a Samoan drop for a near fall. Brian got the advantage back. He hit or he sent Miro into a ring post. On the outside, then hit a run knee off the apron. Back in the ring, he had a missile drop kick. He hit the yes kicks. Miro then countered, caught one of the kicks, but Miro got caught into a knee bar by Brian Danielson. But Miro. He countered the knee bar into not one, but two German suplexes. Miro, Miro then was caught with a roundhouse kick by Brian for a near fall. Miro caught Brian with a powerbomb for a two count. He locked in the game over, but Brian got to ropes. Miro tried again for the game over, but was counted to a near fall. They were exchanging then on the top rope, but Brian hit a top rope tornado DT, which stunned Miro. Brian then locked on the guillotine choke, and Miro passed out. Brian wins the world title eliminator tournament. Now, I'm sure many of us thought because of the heel babyface dynamic that if Miro was going to win this and he would then challenge Hangman and Page. Well, Brian win this. I was a little confused by the main event. How would that fare? But then after seeing it, I more understand it. So then we got the Super Click versus the Young Bucks and Adam Cole. Very different reactions for the two. First Jurassic Express and Christian Cage. Falls count anywhere. Chaotic scene. But could have been shortened. Still a fun match, I must say. So, 
Jungle Boy. Well, first off, what were the Young Bucks wearing? I mean, pink pants and pink mustaches. I think that really aggravated the crowd. They were just like, eh, what is this? But Jungle Boy, he getting into the match, he hit two suicidas on and Cole, but was caught with a trash can by one of the Bucks. Cole then was double teamed by Jurassic Express. He landed face first on a chair, which busted him open. Then back in the ring. Good improv by Jungle Boy. He launched Adam Cole off the apron with a her Karana into a table on the outside. Then Luchasaurus, he was set up on another table on the outside. Matt Jackson hit a beautiful top rope elbow. Two Luchasaurus through this table. Then left was Christian Cage and Nick Jackson. Who are fighting near the concourse area. Brian Color tried to get involved. To no avail. Christian then climbed. Because I'm sure there were... Um, the boxes, the sweet seats, Seb, and the Target Center. Christian Cage climbed up one of these in front of the box, one of the boxes set up in the suites area. He dove off when he crossbody on Nick Jackson and Brandon Color, scored a near fall. They were back near ringside. Christian was sound of the steps. Matt Jackson, he got a bag of thumbtacks. Young Bucks stuffed some of the tacks in Jungle Boy's mouth when a super kick for a near fall. Then a ladder was set up. Christian landed a tornado DT on one of the bucks on the ladder, which had to have sucked. Cole then was sent back first on the ladder by Luchasaurus. And Luchasaurus then landed a choke slam on Nick Jackson on the ladder. They were then fighting on the stage area. And there was scaffolding set up near the stage. Cole hit a Pam of Sunrise on Jungle Boy on the stage for a near fall. They got knee pads. Stuffed with thumbtacks, which I mean, all setting up for the BT trigger, I imagine. But Luchasaurus thwarted the Young Bucks. Christian Cage did as well. And Jungle Boy hit Matt Jackson with a concerto on. The Sage area. And pinned them. One, two, three. Jungle Boy. Luchasaurus and Christian Cage. Get their revenge. On the super quick. Good match. KR. But. Was perhaps a little too long. I will say. Well Swatsy. Per se. So then we got what might have. May have been, well, the previous match in this match was probably to sell the low point 
of the show here or there. Pac and Cody Rhodes for Malachi Black and Andrade El Idlo. Was curious to see how this match would fare. Because, of course, with all four parties involved, was going to make for a fun match. So, Pac was definitely firing with offense. He had a moonsault to the outside, which took out Black and Andrade from the top rope. Pack was about to land a dive on, not sure what he's going for, but was going to land a dive on Black in the ring, but was shoved by El Idolo into the boot of Black. Andrade hit his beautiful torpedo splash on Pack to the outside. Back in the ring, they were offense by Andrade. He is split leg and moonsault for a near fall. He is springboard, his beautiful springboard DT, not sure what you call it, onto the apron on the pack. You can tell there was some dissension in between. Black and Andrade, not sure what was going on, but there were some issues. Um, Cody, he had reversed DT to Andrade off the top rope for a near fall. Pack, while well, the figure four was applied to Andrade. Pack hit the 450 off the top row for a near fall on Andrade. Black fire with a German suplex. Cody and Black were exchanging on the outside. Black hit a beautiful boot to Cody's face. Took him out for the rest of the match. Pack won with a black arrow. Great scene, good finish, and that was the match. I mean, look, the hate for Cody is there, and obviously with these feuds going on, Pac needed a win, I would say, for Andrade, but of course you could say so does Andrade and Black. Well, I'm sure... They'll rebound from this. We'll just have to see. At least Cody didn't get the win. I will say that. So a good match nonetheless. So then. The women's match. Britt Baker versus Ty Conti for the AEW Women's Championship. I was intrigued to see how this was going to go. The decision wasn't in doubt. But you're curious to see how Ty Conti would fare in their big opportunity. See her progression. She didn't disappoint. She came out game and... Had arguably her best match in AEW. So. Rebels out with Britt Baker. Same with Jamie Hayter. So it was a thrust kick. By. Conti following a German suplex from their fall. Conti was on the mill rope. And a hanging neck breaker by Britt for a near fall. Then a curb stomp by Britt. Conti, they call this stunner, but I'm not sure what already happened. It looked like a cutter. Needless to say, good spot for a two count. 
Conti brung it. Shit, the tie KO didn't work. Shit, power driver on Brit for a two count. A moonsault by Ty Conti on the outside. Looked like it missed a little bit, but she landed a moonsault on Jamie Hader and Rebel, which took them out. Conti went for D Ty for a near fall. Britt Baker went for a lockjaw a few times, didn't work. Conti countered. But eventually, Britt Baker rolled up Ty Conti for the win, and she retains the AEW Women's Championship in a very good match for the women. Good showing by both. So then, CM Punk for Sadie Kingston. This was a fight. This was brutal. And I was curious to see how, in this portion of the show, how was this going to, how was the crowd going to react? Because they felt a little down. But for this match, they came back to life. So, because. They love Eddie Kingston. They just love him. And CM Punk, he was booed throughout most of this match. So, right off the bat, because both were drawing at each other, CM Punk was dropped with Kingston's signature back fist. Then the bell rang. Kingston was on the attack. They had some strikes and exchanges back and forth on the outside. They were just brawling with each other. Um, back in the ring, Punk was hit with a superplex by Kingston. They were exchanging in the middle of the ring. Kingston was defiant. Finally, Punk hit GTS, followed another one for the win. CM Punk gets this big victory over Ed Kingston and very good, very good. Then the Coleman event, the inner circle, Chris Jericho. Santana Ortiz, Jake Hager, and Sammy Guevara. First, the men of the year, Scorpio Sky, Ethan Page, Andre Orlovsky, Junior Dos Santos, and Dan Lambert, who was wearing a wacky jumpsuit. If he didn't have enough heat on him already, he definitely generates some more heat here. This match is good. Had some good spots into it. Arlovsky, they called it a spine buster, but it's more like a takedown for near fall. There was toasters, jet skis, kendo sticks all involved by J.K. Hager. Dos Santos hit a moonsault. Good for him. Good for him that he can do a moonsault at his age. Um, Santana Ortiz, they hit a superplex on Dos Santos. Took him out for the time being. Scorpio Sky was set up on a table. Sammy Guevara to the tippy top of the ladder. Hit a senton off the ladder. Through sky, through this table. Great spot. Finally, because everyone else was 
occupied. Jericho and Lambert, they were left in the ring. Lambert was showboating. But he was being beat down with some weapons by and Kendo Six. Finally, because the anniversary of Eddie Guerrero. Um, an homage to his friend and his former opponent, Chris Jericho, a frog splash on Dan Lambert for the win and gets the victory for Inner Circle against Men of the Year and American Top Team. We kind of figure good stuff. Can't complain. They wouldn't need to do. Then the main event. The main event. Hangman Hound Page vs. Kenny Omega. For the AEW World Championship. This was a great moment. Great moment. What these two have built in this feud for two years. Two years. Heyman said at the pep rally that he was going to be the first AEW World Champion. He failed against Chris Jericho. But kept getting built. Kept being built on and he kept being more over, more over. It wasn't his time then, but it's his time now. Great match. Um, but getting into this, I try my best. Just great moments. Um, and great match. And the story that came at the end was very interesting. So, Page landed his offense, hit second rope clothesline, took Omega outside the ring, dive on the outside by Page. Omega hit Ryza Terminator. Went for You Can't Escape, but it was countered by Page. Page hit a fallaway slam, fallaway suicida. Hit a beautiful top rope, Asai Munso, to the outside. Hit Brain Buster back in the ring for a near fall. And then they were exchanging on top rope. Omega, this is how good Omega is. He was on the apron when a springboard sunset flip powerbomb from the outside of the ring to the inside on the page. Good spot by Omega. They were on the apron and Omega hit a snapdragon. On the page. Omega led his offense. Went for the one winged angel. But. Page covered with a victory roll. For a near fall. Omega then hit a tiger driver. 98. For a two count. Then they were on the top rope. Page hit a fallaway slam Spanish fly for a two count. Good spot of the match. And a clothesline off the top rope sent both crashing through the timekeeper's table on the outside. Page then went for the buckshot lariat back in the ring. But Omega pulled the referee in front. 
knocked out the ref. And Don Callis tried to get involved, but met with a right hand by Page. Page then hit a dead eye to Omega. Aubrey Edwards came out as fast as she could, but for near fall. Omega then hit a V trigger, but Page then hit a big lariat to Omega, separate them. And Paige actually hit the one winged angel himself on Omega for their fall. So if someone kicks out the one winged angel, but it wasn't Omega's one winged angel. So there was that. And then this when the finish took an interesting turn. So the Young Bucks, who have been tied to this whole story with Paige. And Omega. They came out obviously worse for wear after that false count anywhere match. They came out limping to the ring. Both were on opposite sides. Paige went for the Buckshot Lariat. Nick Jackson was conflicted. Paige hit. Buckshot Larry to the back of Omega. Omega still on his feet, so Omega, or excuse me, Paige went for another Buckshot Larry, but Matt Jackson on the other side of the ring had a set off with Paige, and Matt Jackson nodded and gave a slip nod to Paige. Paige hit the Buckshot Larry, Omega goes down. One, two, three. And the Cowboy gets a victory. Two years it's been built up for Paige to be world champion in AEW. And it finally happened at full gear. You know, he said himself he... Went back home. Took time off. To be there for the birth of his baby boy. With his wife. Gone down. And now he's the new. AEW world champion. Great story. Great match. Great ending. To full gear. The Dark Order came out to celebrate. With Hangman. Excuse me, he was on Dark Horse Shoulders. Not much to say, great ending and a great show. Probably the best pro wrestling show I've ever seen. Pay per view, I mean, top to bottom. Just not many words. Hopefully, I. Did it as much justice as I could have. Just amazing. And I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. As much as I did. But nonetheless. Thank you for joining me. Um, on. The podcast today. If you like this video. Click that like. If you want to see more reviews. Much more on the channel. Click that subscribe. Thank you all. Great video today. Be back later this week for Sports of Topics, Dynamite. But thank you. I made Joe 2 1 Love. Be safe. Peace.